In the last video, I showed you the malware of the future, a system that's heavily infected but has no indication of compromise. Every process in Task Manager is from Microsoft. Even the VARS total scans in Process Explorer come up clean, but the system is still heavily infected. But what I didn't show you is the network side of what a system like this communicates. So we're on the same system right now, and what I'm going to show you today is the traffic that I've captured from this system from a different computer. So we've conducted what is effectively a network intercept of the traffic going out of this infected computer with stealth malware on it. And this is going to show you how you're going to be able to detect malware in the future, what kind of indicators advanced cybersecurity professionals who are working on SOC platforms look at, and hopefully it's going to prepare you a bit more for where cybersecurity is headed. So as you can see, we've got a very interesting standard query in Wireshark. This is a network packet capture tool. I'm looking at the traffic coming out of this machine and you can see there is a connection being made to golf.moneroocean.stream. Monero of course is a crypto coin and this is a DNS query meaning some application on that system tried to connect to this and right after we have a response from the very same website. So what this shows is there's an active and successful connection being made to some sort of crypto platform and so even though we may not have any indication of malware directly by looking at the network traffic, we can now tell some kind of crypto activity going on here. If we keep scrolling down, you can see there's connections made by Firefox. But then, very interestingly, we have another connection that looks like it's associated with some kind of crypto mining activity. So this is a connection being made to pool.hashvault.pro. And again, we can investigate these things. So if I just do a quick search for Hashvault, you can see that this is a Monero mining pool. No surprises that our machine that's potentially infected by crypto miners is connecting to the site. Of course, there are other connections that are being made that will kind of drown out this traffic if we didn't know what to look for. And that's where your discerning skills are important. It's important to know what is normal, what is usual for a system. So for example, telemetry from Windows or telemetry from Mozilla, part of the experience. But again, that's the power of network forensics. If you know how to look into the information that your computer is sending on the network, you can not only use it to pay endpoint malware connections that are being made and what might be going on on your system. But you can also look at every single application and what type of communication it's potentially doing. For example, you may not have guessed that a private browser like Mozilla Firefox would make so many telemetry requests, but such are the times we live in. Now, of course, what we saw here are all DNS queries, and that's why they're so verbose. That's why you can see the exact domains being listed. But if you look at other types of requests, for example, TCP, you're going to see the data that's being sent, but not necessarily the website that it's associated with. But if we click on one of these, you can see the actual data, which might be encrypted. But if it's not, then you can get a lot more information this way about the communications your computer is making. So I just wanted to use this opportunity to highlight the importance of using tools like Wireshark or firewalls or whatever kind of network tools that you have to analyze the network traffic. We're living in a time where it's not about the application. It's not about what process is running on your system because the same Microsoft process, interestingly here, you can even see explorer.exe being weaponized. So if you go to sysinternals, open up process explorer, go through the process list, there's only Microsoft process like explorer.exe. But some of these will be actively used by malware to do malicious things on your system. So just because you have only system processes does not mean that your computer is safe. This is the era of Lowell bins. There are enough tools inside of Windows or your operating system System, that an attacker who has found access into your computer, they can use that to stay alive on your system. They don't need an external malware. Of course, they might use some, which is very well disguised and hidden away, but the main activity might just be carried out by the process that are part of your operating system. And this is why looking at the network traffic is essential. And it's also important to understand the techniques that are used by hackers and do some offensive security yourself. Because the days of simple malware EXEs that throw up a bunch of alerts are really in the past. Now, for those of you who want to learn how to work in cybersecurity, there's no better way than a hands-on approach. Learn how to hack. Try Hack Me is a great platform that allows you to do just that. So here we've got what looks like a banking site. It's a fake banking site. And we're going to try to hack it. We're going to use a very common command. So we're going to do a DIRB here to go through the website directories. Just quickly open up terminal, paste the command, and boom. 
Now this scan is going to tell us what URLs actually exist on the site that may not be visible at first. And as you can tell, we've got a site here that says bank deposit. And if we open it, we'll copy and paste that here. It leads us to the admin portal. Believe it or not, this is how a lot of websites get hacked because their admin portal is simply exposed and they have weak protection. So you can brute force and get into one of the accounts. Now, this is just an example of what you can do with Try Hack Me. This is the intro to offensive security. Each lab comes with extended tutorials, instructions to walk you through how you can learn common commands, common tools that you would be using in an actual cybersecurity job. And I have to say, they start you off with a really easy tutorial. So anybody should be able to do this. If you know how to use a computer, you're going to be able to follow these instructions. So if you're looking to get into cybersecurity, this is a great way to kind of get your foot through the door. But you don't need any additional tools. You can do it on any laptop or computer and try to finish this challenge that I just showed you right after this video. Everyone is welcome to sign up for free and learn. All you need is an email, tryhackme.com slash PC security. It's our own special link and it's going to be in the description and you're going to be able to get 25% off the annual subscriptions. But like I said, you're welcome to join, complete the first two rooms. And hey, if you do enjoy cybersecurity, don't forget to subscribe to the PC security channel. Thank you so much for watching till the end. This is Leo and as always, stay informed. Stay secure.